Hello everyone, welcome to another BrickLink slash BrickOwl how-to video. This is an extremely, extremely highly requested video. This is going to show you and take you through the steps as to how you can sync your two inventories using a website called BrickPacker. Now what BrickPacker does is it takes your inventory from BrickLink and or BrickOwl, depending which one you want to have your kind of main inventory on. And every time you guys get a sale on one of the two websites, it will take what was in that sale and it'll apply it to the other website so you don't have two of the same parts on uh, each website. So it's really, really nice. Every 15 minutes, it uh, goes through the process to check what BrickLink and BrickOwl orders you have in your store. And then uh, it goes to that other website and removes them from the inventory. So this is a how-to video. I wish there was uh, one of these when I created this. I created it about a month ago at the very end of May. Um, but it has been extremely helpful and obviously it does a fantastic job of syncing the two inventories. But real quick, if you're not subscribed yet to the channel, this is a channel where we do a lot of how-to videos and uh, BrickLink and Brick Owl related things. So go ahead and click that subscribe button. And as always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. So let's get straight into it here. Obviously, you need to begin by starting and creating a BrickPacker account. So if we click Create Account here, you will have to then fill in a lot of information. And you can see you have your name, your username, password, confirm password. And this is all stuff that you want to have set up for your BrickPacker information. Now, once we scroll down to store information, this is where we begin to uh, have to uh, answer some questions or input some fields that are a little bit confusing. And this is definitely where I started to look at stuff and was like, oh, this is going to be a lot harder than I anticipated. So uh, I'm going to start by filling out this field real quick. I'm just going to type in my name and then we'll type in a username. But now is where we get to the information that's going to start to get confusing. So store name, obviously, in this case, it is just a brick in the bucket. And that is for BrickLink and Brick Owl. But as you can see, it says optional. You do not necessarily need to enter this field. It doesn't sync with your websites or the with BrickLink and Brick Owl based on this field here. It actually syncs using things called APIs down here. So, uh, you know, let's let's start going through. If you want to download the orders, you can say yes or no, and you can hover over this and it'll, it'll let you know what it does. But obviously download and save order items is very self-explanatory. I'm going to click yes on this one. I'm going to click yes for sync stores. You want to make sure your stores are synced. Um, and that is pretty much the entire point of BrickPacker. And then auto sync is where when you get an order, it'll automatically sync it with the other store instead of you having to go in and physically click the button that says sync inventories. So you want to make sure that is checked to yes as well. Now, once we get down here, we can start typing in something. Uh, you know, these are the things that begin to matter. So we'll type in the Brick Owl username as whatever your username is on Brick Owl. And then your Brick Owl API key. And it says optional, but this is required if you want to sync your stores. So how do you get your Brick Owl API key? Well, fortunately, it's very simple. You go to the Brick Owl website, and this is the homepage of the website. Once you're here, after you've made an account, you click your name in the top right where you select the drop down, and then you click the profile button. And once you come to this page, you're going to have a lot of different tabs here. And this is nice. You can kind of easily click through your entire store, kind of your orders you know, uh, different things like that. But what we're going to click is this API keys button right here. And by clicking that, we're going to pop up to this new page here. Now, most likely you will have nothing down here. At the moment, I do have an API key and I have it grayed out so you guys cannot see it because API keys are extremely, extremely important to keep private because this is how BrickPacker is going to access your store. So if a ton of people were able to use this key to get into your store, they could screw up your inventory and stuff. So you want to make sure you don't share this API key with anyone. You just want to copy and paste it into Brick Packer. Um, you know, very basic like so. So what if you don't have this down here because you won't default have this. There probably is no key here unless you've created one. You can click this add API key button in the top right. And by clicking that, you'll be brought to another screen. And then here, it'll give you a crazy key at the beginning here. You can title your key. Again, I whited this out so you're not able to see it. You can title your key, scroll down, and click Create Key. And then you should be back on this page where you will be able to see the key here. Um, and what you're going to want to do is a really long number of, or, or a list of letters and numbers. You're going to want to highlight that and copy that. So Control C or Command C if you're on a Mac. Click that, copy that, and then go back over to BrickPacker 
And now what we're going to do is paste that into this field. And again, I do have something in there. I just put white over it so you cannot see my API key. Now, what we want to do is type in our Bricklink username, which should be uh, whatever your Bricklink username is. Mine's actually different in this case. But I will show you. Uh, it's not actually just a brick in the bucket. It's my name. But in this case, that works there. And then this next option here says from sending or from subject ending. So what you're able to do is um, look at the emails and only pull from emails that end with a certain subject. In this case, we're not going to do that. And as you can see, it says obsolete. You used to have to have this uh, look through the email and kind of make sure it was in order. It now understands what is in order between the two websites. Now, if we look down here where it says empty stock room, optional, this is essentially where it's going to put items after they have been sold in your store. So Brickpacker is not able to delete items from a website. What it does is it moves it to the stock room so that it's not able to be sold and it changes the quantity to zero. So what we do in this case, personally, we have it set to B. You can have it set to whatever stock room you would like. Um, and you're going to check this just in this case, we'll put B, but you can put A, B or C as long as you have all three enabled. If you don't just click A and you'll be able to uh, move your items there once you reach quantity of zero. And that is so no one else can buy them. Like I said, it's not able to delete them from Bricklink specifically. It'll have to actually put them in the stock room so no one can uh, purchase them. And then we have the error stock room. So in this case, we put it as C because we use stock room A personally, just as we're organizing things around our store. Stock room B is once we sell stuff. So stock room B should have a quantity of zero for every item there. And then stock room C, we know there was some error between the two websites when an order was placed. Um, so we have to check these out and verify what is in there and what is not in there. So hopefully that makes sense there. And then you can see the next thing down here is this Bricklink consumer key. And this is the Bricklink API key. So they call it a consumer key, but it's the same thing as Brick Owl. Now on Bricklink, it's a little bit harder to find your API key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the description below that you guys can click and it'll bring you to the Bricklink page. And as long as you're signed in, it will bring you up to a web page where you will have to generate your API key. And this is the page that that link will bring you to in the description below. And what you're going to want to do here is set up your IP and your API code for Bricklink specifically. So as you can see, make sure your seller name is listed up here. It'll tell you what your current IP address is. That's not important in the moment. And it says enter your IP address so that you're going to access from. Now in this case, we don't know what the Brickpacker IP is. We don't necessarily know if it's running off our computer. It's obviously running off a different server somewhere. So it says if you want to be able to access from anywhere, set both as 000, but it's not recommended. Do it at your own risk. And this is because potentially anyone could get in if they have your API. Um, in this case, Brickpacker being not located at the same location that I'm sitting at right now, they need to be able to locate it from wherever they are. So what we're going to do in the IP address field is type in 0000. Same thing with the IP mask, 000 and 0. Now it says enter callback URL to receive events. In this case, Brickpacker does not need any callback, so we don't have to enter anything down here. Now we have to agree to the terms of use. If you want to click and read through those, you can. And then you click I agree and click register. And after it's all registered, it'll bring you to this page here. And now you can see it has your seller name, your store name, and a consumer key and a consumer secret key. And uh, again, I have mine whited out just to make sure you guys can't see that so you're not uh, maybe stealing things from me potentially or ruining my inventory. But uh, we also have some access tokens down here. So we have a token value and a token secret. Um, and again, allowed IP 0000 is anywhere and mask IP 0000 is also anywhere. And you want to make sure that is uh, you know, important if you're using a brick packer. So essentially what we need to do now is go back to the actual page of Brickpacker and look what it is looking for. So in this case, it says Bricklink consumer key. So we're going to jump over here and we're going to copy our Bricklink consumer key. So again, control C or uh, command C if you're on a Mac and then control V or control or sorry, command V if uh, you're on a Mac to paste in there. And then you see it says Bricklink consumer secret. So now we're going to go back over here. We're going to copy our consumer secret key. And we're going to continue doing this until we have all of our keys inputted. And you can see we have the Bricklink token value. Jump back over here, copy that token value in the access token box from below. Paste that into there. 
and then uh, Bricklink token secret. Once again, the last thing here is your token secret. You're gonna copy that and you're gonna paste that into Brick Packer. And now what you can do is since everything has been pasted and you've selected your stock rooms, you've entered your names, you can click the register button. And after you click register, you should be brought to a page like this. If you're not, that is okay, no problem. All you have to do is click this number one button over here that says retrieve store inventory. By clicking this, it should bring you to the page that looks like this, but you may be getting an error. So at the top here, you can see I got the error. And as far as I can tell, based on my experience, I have no confirmation on this, but I believe this error is because my Brick Owl inventory is empty. I have no items in my inventory, so it can't find anything to create. But in this case, we do have our BrickLink inventory down here, so it has gathered all of that data from BrickLink. And if we had Brick Owl, it would be up here as well. What I would recommend is that you do not have items in both inventories. You only want to have items in one inventory, or you may run into a problem of duplicates. So in this case, we have nothing in Brick Owl, and we're only going to sync our BrickLink inventory to our Brick Owl store. So if we scroll down just a little bit, you can see we have 2,605 items, and these are 2,605 lots that are only on BrickLink and have not yet been paired with Brick Owl. So we have a few options down here that we're able to do. We can delete these items from BrickLink, but we don't want to do that because that is our main inventory. We can ignore these when syncing the items or syncing the orders, so we can only have these pieces on BrickLink and they'll never go on Brick Owl. Or we can upload some of these or all of these items to Brick Owl, which is exactly what we want to do. So we're going to click Upload right now, and then we'll be brought to this next page, which will have a ton of pictures of parts. Now this first section is a part that are items that are not on Brick Owl. So this BOID up here stands, I believe, for Brick Owl ID number. And this is where you would type in the Brick Owl ID for this minifig. So on Brick Link, we already have this minifig. On Brick Owl, they don't have it yet or they can't find it. Brick Packer cannot locate where it is. So if you go on Brick Owl and you either add the item or you find the item, you can type in this Brick Owl ID here and then sync it. Now the reason we have so many of these is because we have a large inventory of over 2,500 lots. If you have a smaller inventory of, say, 500 lots, this list should be a lot shorter, possibly nothing. But after you type that in, you can click the Update BOIDs, and it'll update all of those, and they'll be in your Brick Owl inventory. Underneath that, we have our used uh, little section here, and as you can see, our used section is very tiny. We have one, two, four, six, we have eight items, eight total parts in six lots of used pieces here. Now, it says used BrickLink lots without a subcondition. So on Brick Owl, there is something called a subcondition where you can label it as like, new, um, good, or acceptable. I believe those are the three. And in this case, all of these are in good condition for us. So what we would do is we'd set the condition used, good, and those will set it for all the ones that are checked. For example, maybe this one is in acceptable condition, but not good condition. You can uncheck that and set all the checked ones to good. And then when this one's here alone, you can set that one to acceptable. In this case, I'm going to just ignore the used parts for the exact moment, and we're going to come down here to the main portion. And this is where you're going to have a lot of rows, depending on how many items or how many different lots you have in your BrickLink or Brick Owl inventory, whichever one you're syncing from. You can do this the opposite way as well. You can have a Brick Owl inventory that you then sync with BrickLink. So as you can see, we can look at all these items here. We can scroll through. We can verify that the photos match on both sides. Over here on the left is the Brick Link photo. On the right is the Brick Owl photo. Obviously, the, they differ a little bit depending on the set as they are different photos. And then with minifigs, you just want to make sure the minifigs match. And in this case, it's only showing 200 rows, which is a lot of rows. But in our case, we have like 2,500 rows. So we're going to scroll through all of these, make sure the pictures match. And then what you want to do is click Upload Selected Items to Brick Owl. And now it's going to upload these 200 items to the Brick Owl website. And this does take a little bit of time. But if you click this, it'll then bring you to another page after this. Or sorry, it'll bring you to the same page after this, but with new parts that you can then double check and verify and upload those items there. And once it is done syncing, you will get a large green message at the top here, or it should be green, and it'll show you all of the lots that were uploaded from BrickLink to Brick Owl. Now you may have an error or two at the bottom. Let's see if we have them. We do have one. So in this case, it is unable to upload this lot, which is Baby Voldemort. 
to Bricklink, or sorry, to Brick Owl from Bricklink, which in this case is okay because what we can do is go verify and double check that Brick Owl ID um, over here, you know, on this menu once it comes into there. So again, if you scroll real quick down all the way to the bottom, you will see all of these parts, and these are the next 200 lots that you're able to sync. Now, this does take some time, obviously, but one thing I want you guys to see real quick, I just mentioned it, but you see over here, this is the brick link picture. This is the lime green slope, two by two. And over here is the brick owl picture. Now, as long, like I said, as this, uh, as this thing matches the color of this picture, you're okay. Because this is brick owl, it's gonna take the image of this and apply the lime color to it. So as long as the images are the same piece and the color is correct, you are okay. So again, if you scroll down, you can see there will be one more upload selected items to brick owl button and a good thing to always do is check your inventory so if we go over here to store inventory on brick owl you can see that we have 199 lots and that's because we've done one sync so far and we missed one lot that baby Voldemort didn't sync so we have the 199 lots out of the 200 that we should have which is perfect so you can double check that with brick owl this does take some time if you have a large inventory to upload each item or to upload every lot um, and depending how the servers are doing over at brick packer and brick owl and brick link because it has to jump between all three of them it may take a little bit extra time or it may be quicker depending on the time of the day um, if you guys have any questions feel free to please ask in the comment section below I will do my best to answer some of these questions I will also continue doing how-to videos on brick packer as I learn more about it again we're fairly new to it um, but we have learned a lot of things about it it's not the most you know not the uh, biggest I guess or the uh, most nicely laid out program, but it does a fantastic job of syncing the two inventories. So like I said, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. There will be more videos coming soon. Like I said earlier, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button. And uh, for those of you who, uh, you know, obviously uh, we had our stream or missed our stream this past Saturday, we have rescheduled that stream for this Sunday, June 28th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Hopefully we can see you guys all there. It should be pretty exciting and pretty fun. Once again, thank you for watching. We will see you in the next video.